This is a geek leader. Hey guys, welcome to episode 163 of Geek Leader Podcast. I'm your host, John Rauda, and special thanks to Private Internet Access. I've been a customer of Private Internet Access for three years now, and I love this service. I was at a security conference a few years back, and I connected to the hotel Wi-Fi, and immediately my endpoint protection software started alerting me that I was being uh, attempted to be hacked, and I guess you could expect that from a uh, security conference, but anyway, I launched my uh, VPN from Private Internet Access, and all the attempts just stopped. Um, my data and in the internet connection is now secure with private internet access, and I've been using their service again for three years, and I love it. I love the fact that you can choose different geographical locations so you can test things like uh, how your DNS is resolving and, and use it for many different reasons, but that's one definite use case for the different geolocations that you can choose with private internet access. And you can get your VPN starting at $3.33 per month. Yes, that's right, $3.33 per month by going to akeekleader.com slash VPN. All right, Geek Leaders, today on the show I've got Nate Payo, and he hosts a show called The All In Podcast. And today we're going to talk about um, how to use LinkedIn to kind of leverage your network, how to network with people, and if you are facing a situation right now in the midst of COVID-19 where you're looking for a job or you're worried about you know um, meeting people and getting out there, we're going to talk about some alternatives and some ways to get through that. And Nate, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. So um, how are things treating you right now? I think just like anybody else, it's the world's turned a bit upside down um, and we're adapting to the changing s- stuff that's that's happening. I think nothing in my life has ever been this fast where things are just so like the apple cart is turned upside down so fast so many times a day. It's like what what you start out with on, on Monday morning by Monday at lunch is way different. And then you go to Friday and you're like, geez. The world has changed so much in a week, and then every week is just a bit much more. So it's been uh, interesting times, to say the least. Uh, knock on wood, haven't been personally affected with anything yet other than you know this, the stay-at-home orders. But uh, I think we're in for um, some, some trying weeks uh, coming up, and things are get, definitely going to get worse before they get better. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know um, before we get into like talking about your your history and kind of where you got to where you are, I know fitness is important to you. Has, has that been impacted with staying at home? Oh, for sure. I mean, I've always been somebody that was better at accountability. If I went, if I left the house and went to the gym, it's like if I left the house and went to the gym, that was better. If I went to the gym and had a partner, that was better. If I went to the gym and had a class or a group, even better. And so not having any of those things, um, I have what I need to do at the house. I could do pretty much anything. I could keep up with the program. It's just, it, it's easy to get into a rut of not wanting to go down to the gym, get everything out and do the workouts and you don't have motivation and there's no people there. There's no energy. It's all truly within yourself to do it. And I think for me, it's like one on one hand, I'm like, uh, I don't feel like doing it. And the other hand, I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't have home gym setups like I do. And it's nothing special. It's just there's people with nothing and absolutely can't do anything. I'm like, I should be um, great, more grateful for that and take advantage of it. So I'm trying to have that attitude of like, hey, you know, you're you're blessed to, to be there to be able to do it. So you might as well do it and not be a little crybaby about it. Yeah, for sure. I know uh, we're, I'm kind of in that same boat. We 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 just moved a couple weeks ago, which I've talked a little bit about on the show. But uh, we have a Peloton tread, and it's still like in pieces. I haven't assembled it yet, put it back together. It's like, well, we got other important things. I keep delaying that. But I wife... will tell you, I will tell you the Peloton. We have a Peloton too, and it is absolutely the best. So I would say just put that thing together because <laughs> the, the instructors bring so much energy and so much motivation to go in there it's it's not like just watching a youtube video at all it, it, you do feel almost like you're really in person and how they're speaking to you with motivation so i've been doing the i've been doing the peloton a lot more than i had in the past um because of that too but i i think there's there's this ability to connect with somebody in a digital class and we'll probably talk about this in, in the future about what what might happen after the COVID-19 passes and what connecting online means to people. But I think 
Peloton's an amazing place to be right now. If you got, if you got a bike, do it. And I would even tell people that they probably don't know this is that uh, Peloton was doing the, that app uh, on your phone for free for 90 days, and they got um, yoga classes, strength classes, hit classes, running classes, indoor, outdoor, like. So you don't even have to have a bike to take advantage of the programs that they have there for free. So I yeah, just... yeah, we use the tread, the Peloton tread, and uh, it's awesome. And and you know, if anybody wants, I don't, I, I, I hate doing this during the show, but you go to geekleader.com slash sponsors and you can click on the Peloton link and get a hundred dollars of free accessories as well if you if you decide to get one. Uh, <laughs> I was even trying to plug that. <laughs> I know, just just kind of came up like, that you way. Talk about the Peloton. I love that thing. <laughs> But uh, also, um, one of the things you, you mentioned, you know, having that motivation to get out. My wife has been, uh, she's, it was like the second day of working from home. She's like, I feel like I just need to shut my laptop, go out the garage, walk around the house, come in the front door and sit down at the, the, the kitchen table and start working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there is something about that transition of leaving your home, driving to work, doing your work, driving somewhere else to the gym and, and, and like this, this mindset shift of like, okay, it's work time. Now it's, now it's workout time now it's home time now it's family time and and being working at home i think that's been a huge transition is is this mindset of like now i'm leaving this part of me and i'm entering this part of my mm-hmm. life and and it it's feeling like you're leaving that behind and and sw- switch of the switches that yeah for that. sure yeah so if you don't mind just a <laughs> i've kind of went off topic but let's uh let's go ahead and uh, tell the audience a little bit about kind of where you uh, have been, what your career's been like, and kind of what you're doing today, and uh, and then we'll we'll get into talking about networking. Okay, so um, I I was somebody that kind of followed a, a typical corporate climb the ladder path. I, w- I got a, a degree in construction management and went uh, out to um, make my mark on the world, working for um, a large general contractor, built leading water treatment plants in California. And then in 2004, 2005, I forget exactly when, home building was going nuts. So I got recruited to come build um, residential housing. And I, I came over and started using my skill set. And when I got plugged in, um, it was di- a lot different than the general contracting world. And it was a lot more relationship driven. There was a lot more about who you knew to get things connected, how you did business with people. And so I, I started kind of getting plugged in with building relationships. Although at the time I wasn't like really intentional about it and I didn't really realize I was doing it. It was like, Hey, these, these subcontractors want to take you to lunch and stuff like this. You're like, "Uh, yeah, I'm just getting a free lunch, I guess. But, um, over time, like I started realizing that it wasn't just like, Hey, I'm getting a a lunch. Somebody's buying me lunch and I'm, I'm because they want my business, but it was really about, building personal relationships with people. And I found that I was getting more value out of people meeting with them than they were, you know, offering me with, with taking me out for lunch. So you start realizing like, Hey, people matter. Like if I have a, if I'm in a pinch and there's always pinches in construction where you like have a deadline and somebody doesn't show or things don't go right. You need to call somebody at the last minute and say, Hey, you got to do whatever it takes to make this happen. And when you have these personal relationships with people that that are supporting your your company and what you need done, you can you can call those people up and get them to respond. Where if you didn't have those relationships, they don't want to take your phone call or they're not really inclined to jump through hoops to do it for you. So I started, I guess, inadvertently developing these relationships in a really small group of people, just really localized to the local industries. And then over time, like anybody being in a, in a job or an industry, you start making more and more connections and you start getting more and more responsibilities. But then I realized like what really set me apart or what the value I brought to the table was a toolbox of skills that you have. And when you're early in your career, sometimes your skill set is your knowledge that you could do or like some buttons you can push on a computer and you can, you can create some sort of work product that's immediately like results. You can see it, you did it, you worked all day on it, here it is. But as you kind of elevate in your career and you become more in this management role or, or your, your, your goals of accomplishments take longer to occur, you start realizing that your tool chest requires other people to have skill sets you don't, especially in like a contracting world where your skill sets are other vendors, other trades. 
they're going to go and build a house for you. Like it's not me building a house. It's a lot of people come together and doing it. So when you start realizing, Hey, you're organizing all these people to do a project successfully, you're able to do more than you can do on your own. So probably about three years ago, I started expanding my um, network base from a localized industry to a more national industry. I started connecting with um, national manufacturers, national buying programs, and other people that were in similar roles as me, but nationally. And, and then over time, those three years, I watched my tool chest exponentially increase as well. And I was able to see some really big um, fruits from seeds I planted years ago that I didn't really identify right off the bat. I was like, you know, what do you go into this thing for? There's no immediate value. There's no, like I went to this thing, I came back and I, I'm able to save some money or I'm able to get a better value for something, but the relationships developed over time and they paid off in a bigger manner than I could have imagined. So that brought me to about three or four months ago where I started saying, Hey, what would, what would happen if, if I know in my head that the seeds I plant today re harvest in five years and everything that I've done in the past has exceeded what I thought was possible in time. What if I did more now, it's so much more now, and just knew that I don't know what will take off. I don't know where they'll go, but just in five, five years from now, whatever I do today will be more. So why not do all in and just kind of get out of my own way? Um, a lot of times in the past, I would let my own fears and doubts hold me back from really pushing myself to be the best version of myself possible. So I would, I would not attend events or I would not put myself out to meet people or I'd avoid conversations and you just go, Hey, what am I doing that for? Like, it's all in my head. Why that's a negative thing. Nobody really cares. Nobody's really get judging me the way I think that they're going to. So just do this and just see what happens. So that kind of led me to the all in podcast was this idea of, Hey, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to, really get outside of my comfort zone, wouldn't it be helpful to show people the conversations I have with people along the way and at the same time show you don't have to have everything perfect to get started. You don't have to have everything just right to start making an impact in your life and live of the best version of yourself possible. Just put one foot in front of the other and do it and just know like you're going to get better and things will, you know, take you down this course. You don't know where it's going to go, but it's, it should impact your life positively as long as you're you know have a generalized idea of where you want to take it so that that's it in a nutshell yeah for sure i know um for me like <clears throat> same thing when i was starting this i recorded the first episode and probably sat on it for like two or three weeks before i ever published it because i was just fearful of what people were going to say and uh, i remember hearing a quote that you know if you're not embarrassed by your product launch then you launch too late and I thought, well, I probably will be embarrassed. And then I also thought about, you know, I, I was coaching my daughter because she was nervous about talking to someone. It's like, what are, what are they going to think about me? I was like, look, they're not thinking about you at all. They're thinking about what people are going to think about them. And, you know, you just got to realize that the things that you're thinking about yourself, they're thinking about themselves too. So just get over it. And I said, why, why am I not taking that same advice myself? Let me, let me do the same thing. Let me just throw this out there and see what happens. And, you know, now I'm 150 plus episodes later, uh, still going along and still enjoying it and meeting cool people like you. And uh, it's just a, a fun yeah. ride. That's funny you say that because like you think like, oh my God, the, I, I flubbed my words or I wanted to say this and I said that or I didn't really explain this very well. But then you think about the the podcast you might listen to or the speakers you might hear or whatever. And you go, I don't really recall like word for word what anybody said, but I remember just, I remember important pieces. I remember the way they carried themselves and I didn't get into like, yeah, that guy really mispronounced his word or he almost spilled his drink on the stage. Like you forget all those things. Nobody's even thinking about them. So it's like, once I had that mindset, like, well, I don't care what everybody else is doing. Why do I think anybody's going to care what I'm doing? Like, just do it, just roll with it. And, uh, what's the worst that can happen? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, the same thing I used to edit all the shows, try to like be perfect and get rid of all my ums and ahs and, and things like that. And I just realized, you know what? I want this to be real. This would be genuine. This is this is me. If I say um or ah uh, or I uh, uh, you know say something like like I'm doing right now, I'll stutter a little bit. Hey, it is what it is, right? It's real. Mm -hmm. It's who we are. Yeah. yeah. Like if you met me in person, this is how I talk. I stammer. I stutter. I can't remember what the word I'm thinking of is for. Like yeah, totally. Just be yourself. So g going through um, 
your podcast and and you know you mentioned expanding your network nationally and how that how that changed and give you big dividends what are some of the steps that you took in order to do that um, i'm assuming it meant going to conferences which may be a little bit more challenging now but what were some of the other things that you were able to do well i would i would summarize with this is is you kind of look and you say hey where where what would what would my vision look like of where i want to be in five years from now and and once you start having a vision of what that looks like then you kind of reverse engineer back into it okay these are the things i need to accomplish to get there these are the types of people i need to to get plugged in with and it could be like a business it could be a hobby it could be anything like if you just said hey and, and five years i want to be an expert at archery then you start thinking okay well you know where am i at today and what do i have to do to get those skills so then you start identifying places you want to go be at. And I, I'm a big advocate of you, everybody here is a saying, like, be in the right place at the right time. Well, if you put yourself in opportunities where the right place is more likely to occur, your chances of being in there at the right time are, are, are exponentially higher. So I try to say, okay, if there's a network, if I want to expand my network, where are the people that I want to connect? Where are they hanging out with? And for, for me, it was like finding trade shows. And you know, then once you kind of go to like one or two, you probably get on a list and some people start inviting you to others. So it's kind of like this snowball effect. If you just start showing up at these places where you think you're going to connect to the people you want to, it's going to lead you to more and more places to find these people and interact with them. So then once you just start going, then it's a matter of getting over some fears of, hey, I got to meet people. I'm here to talk to people like, I, I don't want to, like, I hate these things are uncomfortable. Then it's about finding kind of like your, your way of doing it. Like for me, I, I like to, um, drop the whole business aspect of it all and just kind of say, Hey, look, if I just go in here with the intent of meeting two or three people that I could have a 10 minute conversation with that is very friendly and of value where like, I felt like personal connection to them then I can maybe schedule a follow-up of 20 to 30 minute, maybe a phone call, maybe a coffee, maybe a product demonstration down the road and just keep a conversation going. So I try to keep it very personal, like, Hey, what do you, what are your interests? Find something relatable to somebody. And then it takes this like pressure off of, okay, there's a hundred people at this meeting. I got to make a hundred connections. No, I'm just there to meet two or three and anything over that's just gravy. So, um, do I need to be exchanging business cards? Do I need to be cutting a deal? Do I need to be having this productive meeting? No, I just need to have a 15-minute pleasurable conversation that's going to lead to that. So once I take the pressure off myself of what I'm there to do, it becomes this more fun experience where it's just meeting people and having a good time. And then, like you said, like I said before, if you keep going to these things over and over, all of a sudden these strangers become friends and it goes from being this awkward place you, you don't want to go to, like, I can't wait to have, like, this, you know, work family reunion um that i see these people a couple times a year yeah for sure i know um i do the same thing i go to like the cio summit and the um um uh, what's the other one the technology leadership summit all in the local area in charlotte where i'm at and you know you see the same people i get the you know the same vps from ibm and and bank of america are showing up and they're sitting at the same table we're just you, know, you kind of run into the same folks over and over again and it's like oh yeah hey how are you doing and, you know we, we build up those conversations those relationships and eventually that may lead to a job offer it may lead to um you know business outside of what you're expecting or you know like you said it could be some exponential fruit that comes from the seeds you planted years ago. Mm -hmm. And I try to like listen and hear of, of a need that the other person is looking to have fulfilled. So it might not always be um, a business opportunity. Like you said, sometimes you might meet somebody that's like, Hey, I'm looking to, to fill a job and you're not the right role for the job, but you might know somebody who, who, who could fit. So for me, when I can make those type of connections, I find so much more fulfillment in it than when it's like me trying to like, oh, I met some guy and he's going to hire me. Like that's less fulfillment to me than, hey, I know somebody that's really would like a better opportunity. And here's another person that's got the opportunity. Let me connect those two people. And just they're, they're so excited that you made that introduction. Yeah, for sure. And then you kind of, I don't know, I'm a believer in, you know, you do good things for people and those things will come around eventually. And, uh, you know, you do good things for two people because you help one person fill a job and help one person get a job. You know, now you've, you've kind of doubled your impact in, in the world. For sure. For sure. 
So what are some things that we can do today since uh, a lot of the conferences, I know I was scheduled to speak at a couple and they've been canceled. Um, and, you know, some, I even had one that, so I got a message that they're talking about doing a virtual conference now. Um, but what are some things that we can do using tools like maybe LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatever to uh, kind of build some of those networks and, uh, you know, continue this going without going physically to places? Yeah, I would, I would say LinkedIn if, if you're looking for business, whether you have a business or you have a job or you have a career or whatever it is you're, you're doing, um, get on LinkedIn. A lot of people aren't using it uh, effectively. They think it's still this um, place where you post your resume and it's just recruiters, you know, calling profiles to find people to fill job placements. And it's, it's definitely shifted to this place where it's still business related, but it has like a personal aspect. It's like, it's kind of like Facebook used to be, but it's still, it's not like, oh, I don't need to know a million things about what you did over the weekend and the food you ate and the restaurants you went to, but I do know like personally what you're interested in too. So if I'm posting um, about, you know, career business advice, I might give tidbits of, of like that I go to the gym in the morning or that I have a vested interest in, in something else. And so it makes you a little bit more relatable to somebody because once you kind of like, give like somebody a tidbit of yourself. Like, like we had that conversation, like, okay, we're just talking. We haven't met, we haven't really engaged too much. And you say Peloton. I'm like, I got a Peloton. You got a Peloton. Like all of a sudden we're jamming about Pelotons and we forget that we are there to do, um, you know, business. And then mm -hmm. now that we developed this friendship and this rapport, then it's like, oh yeah, for sure. Let's talk about other things you have going on. So I think LinkedIn is starting to turn this place where you're able to showcase um, a professional and personal little side of yourself without it being bombarded with a lot of polarizing views that maybe Twitter might have or some of these other uh, social media platforms. The other thing I love about it is that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, for the most part, one-on-one -on -one connections. Like I think you max out at 30,000, which is just a ton, ton of connections. <laughs> so, but, but like if you're on, if you're on Instagram and you're like a, a social media influencer, you might have a million followers and you only follow a thousand. And so it's like, it's very lopsided in the relationship in this, you know, if you're following somebody that's not following you back, it's, it's very one sided. You're just following what they like and they're just promoting what a million people might, might like. And that's why they follow or LinkedIn's one-on-one. -on -one. Like if I follow you, if I'm connected to you, you're connected back to me. So we have this, um, more linear connection. It's not like you follow me, but I don't follow anybody else. Everybody's following each other. So the relationships we make with people, I think are a bit more meaningful in the sense of like, you know, it's not just I'm following it because it's of interest, but it's following it because like, hey, I, I kind of think there might be some value to know this person. Maybe there's a, a big business to be done, or maybe they're just providing good, valuable insight or advice, or maybe they're just posting interesting content. So if you can get on there and you start playing in this game and you, you, you can go, People will say like, well, how do I get started with LinkedIn? How do I, you know, I don't want to post a bunch of content. Well, it's super easy to get noticed on LinkedIn too, just by liking comments and liking uh, posts because every time you, you like somebody's thing. So if I like, if you post something, I like it, you're going to get a notification in your um, LinkedIn profile that says, Nate liked your thing. So then you see my little picture and you go, ah, who's that guy? And then tomorrow I like your thing. Okay. Who's this guy liking it? So then you get a little bit more comfortable. And I say to myself, you know, I'm going to, I'm actually going to comment on your, on your post this time. So I make a little comment and it says, Nate, Pilcom. so you go, okay, this person's liked a couple of my posts. This person's commented on my post. I'm going to go to their profile. Boom. You look at it and you're seeing it. So, so you can create some intrigue of, interaction with each other just by liking and commenting and even on a further level down if i comment on your post and somebody else comes in and likes my comment or likes my my or comments on my comment like now you see that notification plus that person sees my notification so it's like you're just constantly seeing these people going in there and it develops some interest and you can go to their profile then you look at it and you say hmm, they're kind of interesting maybe i'll connect with them and even if you don't connect with them, they get a notice that like, hey, they, this person viewed my profile. Now, of course, you can change the settings so people can't see this, but this is my take. I think it's the most effective way to do it is you're creating some interest of who people are so that they want to get to know you. And instead of it just being like a lot of people will go, 
how I connect to this person, I'm going to send this really spammy message right off the bat. That's going to put you in like purgatory where nobody wants to care, care or anything of what you have to say. And you're just kind of like blacklisted. So I don't recommend doing that at all. I recommend just developing some intrigue, liking people's comments, commenting on the comments, kind of engaging in this very casual setting, just like if you were at a networking mixer and, and somebody was chatting about something, you might provide your insight or you might say, hey, that's a really cool thought. I never thought of it that way. That's exactly how LinkedIn kind of works. And then over time, you're, you're developing some intrigue with each other. And then you say, okay, I'd like to know a little bit more about you. I'm going to check out your profile. It's interesting. I want to connect. And then you just kind of keep keep the conversation going. And at some point, you, you maybe say, hey, you know, I really like what you're up to. Can we have a, a phone conversation? Or maybe you post something. And this is where I think the real, the power of it is, is when you're personable on it and you're showing a little bit about yourself that's not just strictly one sided one dimensional like very business related but something somebody can relate to if if i'm wanting to connect with you and i find something that i can relate to like i'll lead with that and then we develop this conversation that becomes more of a friendship first approach and then if this conversation develops then maybe you say hey I, i'm kind of interested in what you're doing why don't you tell me a little bit about it so then the the it's not this pitch process. It's very conversational, very welcoming, very open. So that's the first place I tell people to do is get on LinkedIn and play around in there and play in the sandbox and get to know people. After that, like, how do you do trade shows? How do you do networking? Everybody is getting on Zoom now or some sort of um, video platform because you cannot buy a webcam. They're completely sold out off of Amazon. There's this massive shift of people adopting a technology that it's been around for a while and a lot of people have used it, but there's been a tipping point of where like, you know, your grandmother uses it, your grandfather uses it and everybody's just using it to just kind of do other things with it. Like people in my industry are like, Hey, let's have just a, a virtual coffee with somebody that I'm used to seeing at work every day, or let's go out and have a virtual happy hour. So why not turn those into more fun, um, engagement? So if you're used to going on the first Wednesday of a month to some industry mixer why don't you host it um digitally on zoom get a few people to go maybe only two or three people show up the first time maybe five or six the second time but you're going to build the same momentum and i think you're going to realize that you can still have these connections that you had in person digitally but you're also going to expand your reach maybe meet somebody you hadn't met before because now if i'm in california and you're in south carolina like i could drop in on your happy hour that I would never have had a chance to go to in a million years prior to this but all of a sudden you're able to be exposed to new people and new ideas and the, whenever that happens then your potential is limitless when you when you can just just build on new ideas yeah for sure uh so just a funny story my wife and i we have this uh, couple that we play games with occasionally and one of the games is this dice game called farkle i don't know if you've ever heard of it i've, I've heard of it yeah okay so what we did uh because you know we're kind of in lockdown and they're across town so they couldn't you know we, we you know want to abide by the rules and not spread this virus if, if anybody has it with asymptomatic symptoms or something like that we set up uh you know our our laptops with with uh, Zoom, set up a Zoom meeting, and then we opened another laptop and tilted the screen down so you could see where the dice rolls on both sides. Mm -hmm. And we did like a Zoom meeting with, uh, you know, basically two or four laptops <laughs> set up <laughs> so we could see the dice where they rolled and we, we talked about it. You know, it, it was a great time. Like it was almost as if we were there because you could see the dice that the other person rolled. We both had a copy of the game, so it made it made sense. And uh, we're actually going to try this Friday night, um, which I guess is tonight, at uh, 7.30. We're going to try it with... Um, um, four couples and we're going to play a different, we're going to play categories through uh, a zoom meeting with four couples and try like a little date night in with, with everybody and see how that goes. Uh, you know, that that's so exciting that like th this idea just grows and becomes more powerful and you're doing tons of different things and, and different ways of implementing it. And, you know, maybe in the past you would just be like, Hey, I'll just, you know, call grandma and grandpa, show the kids on FaceTime. Well, now you could you could do this board game with them and you could have more of an interaction, which maybe most people hadn't thought of that before. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I know my wife's team they're doing a they're doing a happy hour tonight at uh, four thirty with her team, just to you know do a virtual happy hour. And um, they usually have like a team lunch every week, and because of the lockdown, they haven't been doing that. And she's like, well, let's just do it over Zoom. Everybody, let's talk about what we're eating. And let's just have a have a team lunch. 
So, you know, they did that, even though, you know, it kind of sounds weird hearing people chew on camera, but. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Those are, those are great ways to stay connected. Yeah, and I go- think that that's going to have an influence on the way we do business when, when things return a bit more to normal and where the lockdowns end, I think people are going to find that this can, this can still be a way of life that we implement for other things. Yeah. And going back to LinkedIn, I know I've used LinkedIn um, quite a bit for the podcast and it's been very helpful. And I met some really cool people and, you know, sort of organically just, you know, I view what people post. If I like it, I like it. If I share it, you know, I, I'll share it. And um, occasionally I'll comment. I don't comment very often. I, I'm just not a commenter. Um, but, uh, you know, that has built up some some pretty cool relationships. And there's been people that I've only had friendships through LinkedIn that, you know, um, we go to a conference. I just got back from a conference in early January. And while I was there, I met people that I only knew them through LinkedIn, but then we were able to, you know, grab a drink, talk to, talk to one another and spend the evening just hanging out. And, um, it's been pretty cool that, you know, those, those relationships started on LinkedIn just because, you know, they posted some kind of, you know, no JS, you know, meme. And I thought it was funny and I commented on it. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, they started following my podcast. We started communicating and one thing led to another. Now we're both at the same conference, hanging out, you know, eating dinner together. I, I would add to that is there's there's all, when you're active on LinkedIn, I think there's a lot of people that are in this place where they don't um, they don't uh, engage, they don't like, they don't comment, they just kind of look. Mm-hmm. And sorry, my my screen froze up, so I am um, making sure I didn't lose you. No, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> the the screen didn't froze up, but the um, the the monitors turned off and it logged back in. But anyways. Um, so like I've been at trade shows before where people come up and they go, Hey, I've been following your comments. I've been following your content on LinkedIn. It's super inspiring. Like keep it up. And you're like, I had no idea that you were doing that. You know, they, they probably connected, but at the same time, they've never really engaged. They've never really liked a comment. So I didn't know that they were doing it. And that's an interesting thing when you, when you, when you look at your, your profile views or something like that, you might say like, Oh, you know, a few hundred people have looked at something, but maybe 10 people commented, like maybe you thinking, ah, I didn't, it's not that important, but then you meet some people that go, I love what you're doing, but they just never tell you about it on, on, on LinkedIn. So I think there's, there's some value of posting, even if you're not getting an engagement because you never really know who's, who's watching, who's, who's, who's listening. And when you're providing this out there, people relate to you and they feel like they know you. So then when they do see you in person, they're like, Hey, I, I know you, like I, I recognize your face and I've seen what you do. I kind of know who you are and I, and they're interested in it. And this conversation evolves because you're like, Hey, cool. Like we, we kind of know each other, but even though we've never met in person. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'll be honest, it, it, I had my first experience not too long ago where I had people recognize me from the show out in public at an event. And it's just, you know, they start bringing up things like, how did, did I talk about that on the show? I guess I did, you know, I forget about some of the things I talk about, you know, but, uh, it, it was, it's pretty interesting. And then they, you kind of feel like, well, they know me, but I don't know them yet. So now I need you guys to talk more so I can learn more about you till we, so we get equal. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's, it's definitely a will, little, little different the first time it happens to you. Like, Hmm, that's odd. But yeah, it's all cool. So uh, if you don't mind telling people just a little bit about like uh, your podcast, The All In Show, I listened to it to, to uh, several episodes um, in preparation for us talking. I, I had not heard of it until um, we got connected and I went through and uh, it's got some pretty cool stuff. But you tell people a little bit about some of the things you talk about on the show and some of the uh, maybe benefits that they can get from also checking out that. Yeah. So the, the all in podcast for me, it's, it's, it wasn't like the intent of like, I'm going to do a podcast to be a podcaster. The intent for me was like the podcast is another tool for me to connect with as many people as possible. So I created, well, I had this idea, which I mentioned already in in the show, which was like, Hey, I'm just going to go all in and try to connect with as many people as I possibly can, because I know that eventually it's going to lead to introductions to people that are going to set my path in this journey that I've never thought possible if I hadn't gone out of my comfort zone. So I wanted to do this thing, but I was also like, Hey, I want to also document it and, and show people like, if you just get started and you just trust the process and you don't give up, you just continuously do this, these steps, you're going to see remarkable, drastic improvement, and you're going to go places. You you might not get there as fast as you think you're going to the first year, but in five years, you're going to look back, you go, all those things I thought like would be so hard to achieve, and 
I'm going to, you're going to shoot past those. You're going to exceed those expectations. And the reason why I know this is because I've actually watched people that were doing similar things in the same time period. Me, me and my wife used to own a wine shop in um, like 2000. 10 2011 and instagram had just came out we were kind of using instagram to like prom promote it and so there's like a few other people that were like doing instagram stuff at the same time and in fact we even hired um a gal who was starting up a social media uh, consulting business and we were like one of her first clients and she was like okay do these tips do these tricks and stuff like this so of course we got like I got scared to like, I was like, I'm not an expert enough to talk about wine. I don't know enough. Like I'm not going to do it. I'm too scared. So I didn't really follow through and, and really, really pursue what I could have done with, with social media and, and grow this following. But her name's Jackie uh, Hermes and she's on LinkedIn and she's like connected with everybody. And now she runs this really big marketing agency in Wisconsin. And I just think like, Hey man, she just like, stuck with it, stuck to the guns, went through the steps, showed up every day and participated and just grew this business of hers from just herself to like this big marketing company that employs a bunch of people and they do big business. And, and she's not the only one I've seen do that where they, they had like this little following and then just, just consistently did it, never gave up and grew to this amazing stuff. So for me, that's the same thing with networking. It's like, if you just keep putting it out there, putting it out there, you're going to meet more and more people. And eventually you're going to meet people that are going to lead you down this amazing path and you're going to blow your expectations out of the water. So part of that led to, well, how can I meet more people? How can I cast a bigger net and show this journey? And at the same time, connecting with people and networking, it's not just about what you can do for them or what they can do for you, but it's connecting people within your network to other people. And so there's a lot of people I know that have great stories to tell and great stories to share, and they can impact a lot of other people's lives. So I'm like, how can I also get them connected to more people? So then I heard the Gary Vee podcast. This is what sold it for me. I love Gary uh, Vee. <laughs> yeah, this is what sold it for me. He goes, the reason why a podcast is something you should be doing is it allows you to punch outside your weight class and it allows you to get connected to people that normally wouldn't have the time of day for you. He, and he used this analogy. He goes, remember that kid in high school that um, wasn't that cool, but his parents went away on the weekend. So he'd have the parties at his house. And because he had the parties at his house, the cool kids went to his house and then he became cool by default because he brought the cool kids. That's what a podcast does is it allows you who might not have like if I just cold called a bunch of people up and said, Hey, I want to pick your brain for a moment. They might not take my call or respond to my message or whatever. But if you have a podcast, they're like, hell yeah, I'll come on your podcast. I'll talk about it. So you're, you're able to actually connect with people that you maybe didn't have the clout to get in front of at this time and, and chat with people. And, and so I was like, that's it. I'm doing that. I'm going to do a podcast and it's going to be part of this mission to just kind of go all in, meet as many people as we can and try to connect as many people within my network to each other and just see what, what we can do over the next year to five years. Yeah. And I, I can vouch for that a hundred percent. I know like when I started the show, um, I, I wanted a couple of authors that were like my favorite authors to come on the show. I'm like, there's no way they'll come on the show. I went and checked out like what their speaking fees were to speak at conferences. And there was one guy that was like, his speaking fee was like $25,000 for a 45 minute talk. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get him on my show. And honestly, I went through LinkedIn. I, I pinged him. I, well, I, I had shared several of his books and tagged him in it. I connected with him. He accepted my connection. And I pinged him and said, hey, I've got this podcast. I've had, you know, 40 or 50 episodes. You want to come on? And he said, yeah, sure. We talked for like an hour. Now he's been on twice since then as well. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you get, you can definitely punch outside your weight class. I've talked to, you know, uh, C-level executives at IBM, Microsoft, um, people that would probably, uh, they, they wouldn't connect with me if I didn't have a podcast to, to, for them to come to and talk to. But because of that, now I feel like I have relationships with some of these people that have um, helped me out, but also I've been able to help them out too. I, I think there's a le another lesson there too, is like, <laughs> ask, you know, like there's, there's no harm in asking this person to be on your show. Cause, cause I would be in that boat where I go, geez, 25,000 to be on this show, uh, like to get a speaking engagement with this guy. Like mm -hmm. there's no way he's going to come on my little old me's podcast with uh, this, this small following when he could command big, big dollars. And then he's like, 
yeah, sure, I'm going to do it. And then now that uh, somebody with cloud has been on your show, then the next person you go ask to do it, like one, you're you're more confident that people may say yes or they may say no, but it, it's not going to kill you if they do say no. But you also got a little bit of like, hey, so and so was on the on the show. Like, hmm, I know him. You know, I'd like to be lumped in with that guy. Like, let's do it. And it just everything grows from getting outside of your comfort zone and just being being open to whatever comes next, whatever comes your way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much. Tell people how they can connect with you, how they can find out your podcast, and uh, you know, continue to grow your network. Well, I'd like to just say anybody that wants to get connected, the central hub is natepeo.com. That's N-A-T-E-P-E-O.com. From there, you're going to find um, connections to LinkedIn or you're going to find um, the podcast from there. Of course, you can you can search those platforms for my name. They should pop up at natepeo.com. It's, it's the easiest way to, to get in t- touch. All right. I'll link that up and I'll link up uh, your podcast and everything else in the show notes at geekleader.com and people can find it there. If uh, you know they forget to get to your site, it'll be there as well. And man, I appreciate having you on. Stay safe and uh, stay locked down. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Nate. And if so, please make sure you share this on Twitter, leave a rating and review in iTunes, or click those, click those stars on an Overcast player or a uh, um, cast box whichever one you're using really appreciate it really appreciate all the support that we've been getting for the show even though uh, i know um, people are driving less due to the uh, lockdown that's going on with covid19 but anyway really appreciate all your support guys stay safe stay healthy Ow!